Alright, moving into the sniper rifles. The first one is just the plain ass sniper rifle. You can call it the bolt action rifle, that's what I would call it. Action never gets old. Alright, in my original version, I tested the sniper rifle on the Obispo, which was a fatal mistake because it moves around like crazy, and I was very criticized for having the wrong number of shots every single time. Although, when I look it over in slow motion, I swear that those shots hit, but you got belligerent YouTubers out there who won't take a hint. So, I'm gonna test it on a much more stable enemy. I'm gonna test it on a bloodshot. Alright, so two shots from the regular sniper rifle to take down a bloodshot. Now, I know some of you are claiming, how do you know that was the same bloodshot? Because if it wasn't, it wouldn't have took only two shots. And also, I know I quick shot it instead of regular shot it, but I highly doubt that matters in most cases. It will only make a difference to you if you have that skill that increases the power of your quick shots. But anyway, two shots from the regular sniper rifle. Okay, that is it for the plain ass sniper rifle. Okay, now for the next rifle, the semi-automatic sniper rifle. Alright, now let's test a semi-automatic rifle on a bloodshot. Alright, so three shots from the semi-automatic rifle to take down a bloodshot. So, obviously that proves that the bolt-action rifle is more powerful than the semi-automatic. But then again, beginning at Resident Evil 4, the semi-automatic was always less powerful than the bolt-action. So that's just natural. Alright, that is it for the semi-automatic sniper rifle. Now for the last sniper rifle, the anti-material rifle. There's a typo here. If you look at material, it's spelt wrong at the end. The anti-material rifle can only be used by Piers Nivens. This is his personal sniper rifle, and it is one bulky motherfucker. Alright, with the bulkiness of this weapon and how long it takes to perform the bolt action, I'm pretty sure this is the most powerful sniper rifle. These freaking bullets are huge. Uses a different type of ammo than the regular sniper rifle ammunition. Alright, let's test the anti-material rifle on a bloodshot. <laughs> Alright, so two shots from the anti-material rifle to take down a bloodshot. I would imagine so, it is a bolt action, just like the regular one. Between the regular sniper rifle and the anti-material rifle, I am willing to bet that the anti-material rifle is more powerful, because it fires a different type of round, the loudness of firing the thing, 
but has the slowest bolt action and the slowest reload. And unlike the regular sniper rifle, Pierce can't move when firing the anti-material rifle. So as soon as you shoot this, you are stuck in bolt action, and you might get yourself killed, just like in Resident Evil 4 and 5 when you fire a bolt action rifle. That's why I never really liked them. Alright, that is it for the anti-material rifle, as well as all sniper rifles. Alright, time for my favorite weapon class, the Magnums. The first one is the return of the Lightning Hawk from Resident Evil 5 and Resident Evil Revelations. Major recoil, as Magnums would always give. Alright, I am gonna test the Magnums on the Ubispo, which is the boss with the chainsaw arm and the heart in it. Okay, for some reason, my brain just completely lapsed right there, and I <laughs> totally forgot how many shots it took. It either took four or five shots, I can't remember. I'm landing more towards four shots than five shots, but I could be wrong, and you're reading the text right there, and I'm making a complete fool of myself. Alright, this magnum is powerful, but I know it's not going to be as powerful as the next magnum. Alright, that is it for the lightning hawk. Alright, now for the last magnum, the elephant killer. Now, this is exactly the same magnum from Resident Evil 4 and 5. It is the hand cannon. It is the Smith & Wesson Model 500. And actually, Elephant Killer is making a reference to what the merchant says in Resident Evil 4. If you remember... Stranger! <laughs> what you need that for? Go and hunt an elephant? It's that reference exactly. <laughs> so I wonder what they're gonna call it next in Resident Evil 7, if they put it in there. Let's test the Elephant Killer out. Major recoil is ridiculous, but thanks to the use of this trick, it's not really a problem. Alright, so now let's test the elephant killer on a Ubistvo. Alright, so I think that took three shots. One of those shots I think feel it missed, but it's possible it hit, so it could be four shots. So, just in case, I'll make a range of three to four shots with the Elephant Killer to take down the Ubisvo. So, either way, it is more powerful than the Lightning Hawk. Now, the thing with the Lightning Hawk that has over the Elephant Killer, of course, is since it uses a magazine instead of a revolver, it reloads faster, and it doesn't have as much recoil, so it fires faster. The Elephant Killer has a lot more firepower. <laughs> Alright, that is it for the Elephant Killer. Now I'm going to do my classic tradition. I'm going to take the most powerful Magnum, which is the Elephant Killer, to a standard zombie's head. I'm going to go for at least a double headshot in this one. And I'm also going to show you a special little thing you could do with the Elephant Killer in Jake's campaign. So first, for the regular headshot. <laughs> Oh shit, I almost got back-to-back -back double headshots, but that first one was definitely a double one. Alright, now for the other thing I want to show. You're going down! Alright, that is it for the elephant killer, as well as all magnums. 